what was it that led you to look into producing a prosthetic hand to help uh, a child who wanted to be a gymnast? Actually, we were very blessed. Uh, the project actually came to us. Um, we have a, a wonderful community partner, TNT Kids Fitness, um, which is a nonprofit organization, and they cater to children with participation restrictions all the way up to recreational and competitive gymnastics. And so they contacted us because they had a, a young girl in the beginner gymnastics classes that was doing an excellent job, but she had a hard time participating in the bar related activities because she had a left congenital hand deficiency and she didn't have any fingers on that hand that were functional. And so they contacted us to see if maybe we could provide some strengthening exercises or range of motion um, to help her in that process. And so I contacted um, a couple of PT students that were interested in pediatrics and we started to develop a strengthening program. But then we kind of thought, maybe there's more we can do. And so I contacted my colleague, Dr. James Shannondor, um, and we started brainstorming, could we 3D print a prosthetic hand or some sort of device that would allow her to be able to maintain grip on the gymnastics bar? Now, this is totally pioneering then. It wasn't something you could buy off the shelf. Not off the shelf, no. You can get a traditional professional prosthesis um, that's usually used uh, to improve function with ADLs and things like that. The trouble with that is that they're very expensive and very um, time consuming to, to actually get. And the great thing about 3D printing is that it's quick and um, t uh, cost efficient and we can modify it really easily. And so because we were looking at a very specific use to be able to hook her hands on this gymnastics bar. Um, the 3D printing was perfect because we were able to make these quick modifications to really hone in on what her needs were. Right, could you tell me what you did in fact? Sure, yeah, we uh, met with the child and we looked at her hand and, and made sure we kind of knew what uh, movements and strength that she had present in that hand. And then uh, my colleague, Dr. Shannondor, he really did a lot of the background research. And what he found was that there's a bunch of websites out there, such as Enable, which is where we went, that have all of these source files that are free and available to people that have access to a 3D printer. And so we didn't have to create this design from scratch. Um, and actually, we, we found a hand, the Talon hand, um, that was already out there with the blueprints. And so we printed that, and it looks like this. Um, and it's a wrist powered device, so she would put her hand um, in there and then by flexing her wrist, the fingers close. By extending her wrist, the fingers open. And so this was our first trial. Um, so we, we brought her in and we trialed it, you know, can she open and close it? Can she hold a water bottle? Things like that. And then we asked her to actually put the hand on our parallel bar and see if she could grip um, and kind of trial it in increments before we actually brought her back into the gymnastics facility to try it on an actual bar. And what happened? So she really liked it. We were really happy that her she responded well to it. Um, she had never had anybody really reach out as far as um, you know, having her use her hand in any functional way. She's compensated beautifully, so she didn't need any help with getting dressed or, um, or any ADLs at all. And so this was really specific for that gymnastics component, which was cool. So she really liked it. She played with it. She picked it up really quickly. Um, and she was a little hesitant to try it at gymnastics just because, you know, she was very reserved and shy and so when anybody would ask her about her hand she would she would be a little hesitant about that so we were we were wary about um, you know bringing it to the gymnastics facility where all of her peers were initially but she she responded really well to that and seemed really excited to try it and and with a with a, a, a normal hand you can grip and hold tighter if you want to how does that go with a prosthetic hand so this is where we actually kind of ran into some issues with the prosthetic hand. So the original design um, is meant to be very functional and flexible, but when she would grip on the bar, we would notice that the fingers weren't able to withstand 
her body weight and so she'd start to slip so part of our process which again was really helpful having the 3d printer being very quick um, to modify we were able to create uh, basically a block here so that when she extended and and bore weight through the bar, the fingers would not fail. They would just lock into place. And so it was more of a hook than, you know, functional fingers, but it still has some grip to it. So she can get onto the bar and then grip stronger um, and hold from there. And how much of a learning curve is there? Because uh, the, the patient needs to actually control the hand as she would a normal hand, which means an awful lot of nerve connections going on and brain process to, processes to make it happen. Yes, and, and we thought it would take her a little while, and honestly, she picked it up so quickly. I mean, the device is really, is really nice for kids because it's, it's literally just wrist flexion and extension. And so she was able to figure that out within minutes. Um, and, you know, kids are resilient and, and um, quick learners, and so she latched it up onto the bar and started hanging uh, immediately, and she was pretty thrilled that she could hang um, a lot longer with the device than without. So what does this mean to her life then? I mean, how much has it improved her participation and her ability to have fun as well as to make real progress in this athletic area? Yeah, and that was our main goal is we really wanted to aid her in fully participating in her gymnastics class. We wanted her to, to not feel like she couldn't participate in all areas. And so I think it really opened up her her mind to the possibilities of maybe just adding a tiny piece of equipment and then she can do anything her peers can do and that's what's really important to us as peds therapists is to make a difference in a child's life um, especially at that participation level so we were really excited when she was able to meet all of her goals of um, hanging for a lot longer to be able to do a chin up and a pullover and those were the skills that she needed to do to be able to progress class levels and she was actually able to move up to the next class level because of the use of this hand so we were really excited about that um, and then we we did interview her at the end um, to really see what she felt personally about her satisfaction with the hand and confidence and both of those showed improvement so we were really excited about that. Right that, that's amazing and and she needs to have confidence in it and be able to progress. Uh, what's the limit to the kind of progression you could do with such a prosthetic hand then? Yeah so that's another thing that we kind of ran into as she was progressing class levels and um, the the way we modified the prosthetic um, was to, to really maintain a hang position um, but once she started to be able to do flips and push-ups we needed to be able to figure out a way that she could lock into extension as well um, so that was going to be the next step of our of our modification is working towards modifying this prosthetic to meet the demands of the higher level gymnastics. And the main concern that we had was safety for the child. And so as she progressed through more advanced gymnastics techniques, we wanted to make sure that she was safe throughout that process. And so, you know, the, the tensile strength and um, the risk of failure was of the device was always on our minds to make sure that that wasn't um, going to happen and, and cause injury to the child. So what is the message you would give to physical therapists around the world about this very fascinating development? Yeah, I I would say it's it's more about awareness that 3D printing has become a lot more accessible now and so for pediatric PTs to find where the 3D printers are in their area because they can make prosthetics, they can make little adaptations or different grips, um, and it can be so customizable and individualized for your specific child, which is, which is what's important to us as peds therapists is just to, to fit the needs of, our, of that one child and, and make that participation improve. And so I think just knowing where the printers are and being able to have that conversation of, of your idea of what this child needs and then to be able to print it and make it possible.